Om Namah Shivaya Shivaya Namo Namah Om Namah Shivaya Shivaya Namo Namah The precincts of a temple, a cowshed, a sanctuary, or one's own courtyard shall be selected for the performance of sacrifice. It shall be on a raised platform, at least two hostas high. It shall be well decorated. Paddy weighing a bara shall be spread on the ground to make a large circle. Diagrams of lotuses shall be made in the middle and in the eight quarters on the border of the circle. A big pot round which a thread is tied shall be placed in the middle and eight other similar pots shall be placed in the eight quarters. All of them shall be fumigated with gugulu. In the eight pots, bunches of mango leaves shall be placed with darba grass. They shall be filled with water purified by mantras and five kinds of articles. Precious gems shall be put in the nine vessels, one in each. The sensible devotee shall ask his preceptor to preside as a priest. The presiding priest shall be accompanied by his wife. He shall be well versed in the rituals. Gold idols of the guardians of the quarters and Vishnu shall be put in the different vessels. Vishnu shall be invoked and worshipped in the central vessel. The respective guardians of the different quarters shall be worshipped in the vessels concerned, using the dative case after the name and ending with Namaha. The invocation shall be performed by the presiding priest. He shall repeat the mantras a hundred times along with the Ritviks. At the end of the japas, Homa shall be performed to the west of the vessel. According to the time, place, and convenience, the offerings in the fire may be a crore, a hundred thousand, a thousand, or hundred and eight in number. It shall be performed for a single day, for nine days, or for forty days. The sacrificial twigs shall be of the shami tree, if the rite is intended for shanti, suppression of evil effects or of palasha tree if the rite is intended for the acquisition of livelihood. Cooked rice and ghee shall also be used. The offerings shall be made by repeating the names of the deities or mantras. The articles of worship used in the beginning shall be continued till the end. At the conclusion, the punya havachana shall be performed and the holy water sprinkled over different members of the family. As many brahmanas as the number of offerings made shall be fed, O scholarly sages. The preceptor and presiding priest shall partake of sacrificial food alone. The entire rite shall conclude after the worship of nine planets. A gem along with monetary gifts shall be given to each of the ritviks. Different types of gifts shall be made to deserving persons, to boys invested with sacred threads, to householders, sages, virgins, ladies, and widows. The materials used for the rite shall be given to the priest. Yama is the presiding deity of all calamities, grave diseases, etc. Hence, to gratify Yama, Kaladan shall be made. A replica of Kala, god of death, in the form of a man holding noose and goad, shall be made in gold, using a hundred or ten nishkas, gold coins. This shall be given as gift along with the sacrificial fee. Sesame sheets shall be gifted for the sake of longevity. Ghee or a mirror shall be gifted for the sake of quelling ailments. Rich men shall feed a thousand brahmanas. The poor shall feed a hundred brahmanas. Indigent persons shall perform rites according to their capacity. For the quiescence of evil spirits, the great adoration of Bhairav shall be performed. At the conclusion, Mahabhishek and Naivedya shall be offered to Shiva. Then a public feeding of the Brahmanas shall be held. 
By performing sacrifice in this way, there will be an alleviation of all defects and evils. This Shanti Yajna shall be performed every year in the month of Phalguna. In regard to evil dreams and ill omens, this shall be performed instantly or definitely within a month. When one is defiled by a great sin, the worship of Bhairav shall be performed. In regard to great diseases like leprosy, etc., the vow shall first be taken and the sacrifice performed later on. Indigent persons wanting in all these things shall make a gift of a lamp to the deity. If incapable of even that, he shall take bath and make any gift. Or he shall make obeisance to the sun god 108 times, repeating the mantras. A devotee shall perform prostrations and obeisance a thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, or a crore in number. All the deities are delighted by the obeisance sacrifice in this way. The obeisance is performed with the prayer, O Lord, Thou art great, and I am humble. My intellect is dedicated to Thee. A void thing does not appeal to Thee. I am no longer void. I am Thy slave now. Whatever vestige of egotism remained in me has been dispelled on seeing thee. Namaskar, offering of the soul, shall be performed according to ability. Sacrificial food and betel leaves shall be offered to Shiva. The devotee himself shall perform a hundred and eight circumambulations of Shiva. Such circumambulations, a thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, or a crore in number, he shall cause to be performed through others. All sins perish instantaneously at the circumambulations of Shiva. Sickness is the root cause of misery, and sin is the cause of sickness. Sins are said to be quelled by virtue. A sacred rite performed with Shiva in view is capable of removing all sins. Among the sacred rites of Shiva, circumambulation leads the rest. Pranava is in the form of japa, and circumambulation is a physical rite. Births and deaths constitute the illusory cycle. The balipitta of Shiva is symbolic of this maya chakra. Starting from the pedestal, the devotee shall make circumambulation halfway, return to the pedestal, and move anticlockwise to the place where he stopped before. Returning to the pedestal makes the circle complete. This is the procedure of circumambulation. When the birth takes place, the obeisance which is the dedication of the soul prevents further birth. Births and deaths originate from the maya of Shiva. After such a dedication, the devotee is not born again. As long as the body exists, the jiva is dependent on activities, and he is spoken of as being in bondage. But when the three forms of the physical body are under control, it is called moksha, salvation, by scholars. Shiva, the primary cause of causes, is the creator of maya chakra. He wipes off the dvandva, birth and death, which originates from his maya. The dvandva is conceived and created by Shiva. It shall be dedicated to him. O scholars, it shall be known that circumambulation is highly pleasing to Shiva. The circumambulation and obeisance of Shiva, the great soul, and the adoration performed with the sixteen upacharas accord all benefits. There is no sin in the world which cannot be destroyed by circumambulation. Hence, one should dispel all sins by circumambulation alone. A person observing worship of Shiva shall observe silence and perform one of these, a sacred rite, penance, japa, maintenance of the knowledge, or meditation. He shall observe truthfulness, etc. All sorts of riches, divine body, knowledge, removal of ignorance, and nearness to Shiva are the results of sacred rites, etc. The sacred rite yields the benefit by the performance. 
It removes the darkness of ignorance. It wipes off future birth. By the achievement of true knowledge, the miseries shall seem as if they did not exist at all. The true devotee of Shiva shall observe the sacred rites, etc., in accordance with the place, time, physical ability, possession of wealth, as befitting his state. The intelligent devotee shall take up his residence in a holy center of Shiva, desist from violence to living beings, without exposing himself to undue strain, and spending only such wealth as he earns by legitimate means. Even water, sanctified by the five-syllable mantra, is conducive to happiness like cooked food. Even the alms begged and acquired by an indigent devotee is conducive to perfect knowledge. Charitable food of a devotee of Shiva increases devotion to Shiva. Shiva yogis call such charitable food sacrificial offerings to Shiva. The devotee of Shiva shall always be scrupulous about the purity of his food, wherever he stays and whatever means of sustenance he has. He shall observe silence and shall not disclose the secret. To the devotees he shall expound the greatness of Shiva. Only Shiva can know the secret of Shiva mantra. No one else. The devotee of Shiva shall always resort to the phallic emblem of Shiva. O Brahmanas, one becomes Shiva by resorting to stationary phallic emblem. By worshipping the mobile phallic image, the liberation is certainly gradual. Thus I have mentioned the achievable and the excellent means of achievement. What has been mentioned formerly by Vyasa and what has been heard by me before has been mentioned to you. May welfare attend ye all. May our devotion to Shiva be stable and firm. O scholars, whoever reads this chapter by Shiva's grace and whoever listens to this always shall acquire the knowledge of Shiva.